Okay, so in this video we're looking at using the UV editor to select faces so we can texture an item in different ways. So at the moment I'm just using a cube. Um, I would probably use the modeling toolkit to be able to select different components of that. So if I go into faces then I can select the faces in this scene. Um, but the question is that if I have a, a complex object um, I don't want to select all the faces together. So I'm in the modeling menu set and I can open up the UV editor here or if I want to work uh, UV editing I have a menu set for that which should bring up the uh, UV layout here as well. So I can see this kind of directly relating to each of the objects in there. So I could potentially, if I'm in face mode, select the faces in here or marquee the faces in here and select a bunch of these at once. If I'm in uh, object mode, I can't do that. So this is why I'm suggesting we have this, these modes open here so that we can actually select those individually or within that. If I'd have done some uh, extrusions to this, so the, the concept we're working on is um, a book. So I'm going to try and, off the top of my head without any planning, just make a, uh, a book from this in which I would probably extrude uh, these items. So if I do an extrusion and just scale those down slightly um, and bring them in. So I'm kind of making a simple kind of indentation there. Uh, so that's probably the simplest way of making a book. And if I want to have loads of um, items within that, I would probably smooth that off and, and work with that slightly differently. So that's a real kind of rough version, but I've got the kind of cover, the spine, um, which I would add more detail to. Uh, but what I can see here is that these faces haven't updated the UV um, texture. So if I do go into faces, I find that that one there is still the same as this one here so I actually have to update the UV edit for this because it's a more complex object and I haven't updated the UVs. So there's a few things I can do with this. Uh, what I would like to do is look at the UV menu here um, and there's a couple of options that I can, I can start working with. Some of these are split UVs and cut UV edges. So if I can double click on one of these edges, I can see that I can get an edge loop around there. Um, and I can define where the difference is. I've held down shift and double click that again. Um, and I'm just really defining a difference between these two items. So I can cut UV edges on that. And that defines that as a separate type of object to the other ones. If I double click around here, I've got another UV edge, but I can do a similar thing with uh, these parts of the, the object as well. And that should really make some splits for me that allows me to get a nice clean layout of my, um, of my work. So I'm splitting UVs in various places so that it can basically unwrap this in a neat way. So from this point, I'm just going to save, uh, save and move on uh, because uh, what I want to do after that is there is an unwrap function, but before I do that, I would probably show you some of the uh, automatic uh, tools for doing that. So if I use this kind of, if I go back to object mode, so I'm selecting the whole object rather than the faces. Uh, I can tell it to do an automatic mapping of the faces. And now you can see how that's kind of split those into different areas. So now if I go back to, it's actually automatically put it into face mode. But I've got these in groups then, and that's probably one of the covers. If I mark here around that, a certain area, it's not showing me that here. If I'm selecting these items here, I can get an idea of which one's which. So if that's the paper, I'm seeing that those items there are the paper, but I can also marquee around some of these 
and select them as different items. Uh, but in the most simple form, I would probably say those are a one, a one part. Um, I could select them here, but very carefully marking around that one. Um, it has selected items in the background though, so uh, I'd need to shift click and turn those off. The reason it's selecting things in the background is because of the camera based selection. Uh, so you've got camera based selection here. Uh, if I turn on camera based selection for marquee, it will only select things that it can see. So if I do marquee around there, it will select those two faces and not the ones behind, and then I can shift click that one as well. So there's there's a few ways of doing that, but it, once I've got those selected, and I think this is your eventual aim, assign new material um, and add a new material to that, which we can uh, name how we want. So that's probably Lambert 2, but I can call that uh, paper and change the look of that to the rest of the book. Um, so that was using the automatic layout. There are a few other options on there. Uh, try, yeah, try cutting the UV edges like that and doing an automatic layout. There is another way of working. If I go back to the uh, object mode, um, I tend not to use this so much, so it may go wrong, but there should be an unwrap uh, option in here. UV editor baking, UV snapshot. Uh, cut so. Uh, no, I can't remember where it is. <coughs> if you find an unwrap option, that may do that for you once you've cut the seams. Um, but the other thing, if I'm not using standard uh, standard uh, textures within my Maya, I can also make this into a PSD network, and that will allow me to color it in a single image. So if I create a PSD network for this uh, and add the color to this, say so create that selected attributes color. Um, it's working on Lambert 1, which isn't ideal, but I should have set a new material for this already. It will create that, um, and what it would do, it will create a Photoshop document that I can then color freehand um, with my system as well. So if I go into, uh, it's probably saved that into source images. You can set that up as you go forward, but uh, uh, source images and look by date modified so this is it book demo cube shape one if I open that I should get a a grid of what what items I'm working with and I should be able to update that within this so in my layers I've got a UV snapshot but in my layers I've got the color that I was working with um, and I know that uh, certain areas were paper so I can do a quick selection tool if I'm in the UV snapshot mode I should be able to uh, magic wand certain areas so I can remember that those those were the book um, so if I come back into the, the color layer I could do a, a new layer just for the, the pages uh, I make a new layer there this I'll call paper, um, and then I can fill that with a certain color. So I'll fill that with white for now, uh, and save that document. One of these will be the, the front. If I go back to Maya, I should be able to see which one's the front. If I go back, select the object, that's actually all, already a uh, so that one there, I can just work out which one's the front cover. So that one there's the front cover. If I go back into Photoshop, I can uh, add this in here and just say book. Uh, and get that a color and a size that I can see. Um, 
So then again, if I save that, that's in my Lambert color folder layer there. When I go back to Maya, I should be able to uh, go back to image and update PSD networks. And that should bring that into my scene here. If I turn the colors on, I can see where that's turning up. So that's a, a way of texturing. It may be a slightly different thing to what your question was, but hopefully that's answered how to select items on that um, and how to work with that in different ways.